the FTC or the Federal Trade Commission is making some changes. How is this going to affect you as a beauty consumer? And how is this going to affect me as an influencer? We're going to talk all about it today. I'm going to spill the tea. I'm going to share some secrets. I'm going to share some confessions. We're going to get into it. If that interests you, stick around and we're going to dive right on in. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I am Cher. So on the channel, you know, I cover a lot of different like beauty news, beauty uh, new releases and reviews on a lot. I love to do a lot of like lifestyle and vlogs as well, especially travel. Um, but, you know, I've been doing YouTube for three years now, something like that. About three years hadn't you know I started off very small didn't do a lot just kind of speckled here and there and then really started growing over the last two years or so I've been on Instagram growing um, a lot more than that before that though so uh, honestly it started in 2020 and that's when I start br started a brand new beauty blog so it's been four years now as a as an influencer. Now, about a year or two before that, I had actually, is when I really first started getting into the blogging world, and it started as a special needs, um, parenting disabilities blog, because I have kids with disabilities, and it started as this diary for me almost, and like very therapeutic, and a great way of like building community, and just identifying things that all of us, um, you know, disabilities moms, you know, could relate to and just have that wonderful community for each other. And then I started realizing how much I loved blogging and like I was just made for this. And unfortunately, though, it meant no privacy for my children and for what they were going through. And that's when I got started in the beauty world. So I have about six years of experience as a blogger and about four years of experience as a beauty influencer specifically. So I have a lot to share with you guys how it relates to the things we're going to talk about today. Um, like I said, some confessions. So <laughs> I just, I, I, I just thought, you know, it would be interesting for you guys to know how some things work in the influencer world and how this affects you as consumers and what things can you trust and not trust. I am going to spill the tea wide open. So Let's talk about first <laughs> the Federal Trade Commission and, you know, in general, um, what rules have kind of been in place so far as they govern specifically beauty brands and influencers. Okay, I'm going to be talking about in the beauty brand space today because that's more my knowledge. I don't know about all the other ones. Not in those other niches. Okay, up until now, the biggest rule that the FTC governs for me as an influencer as well as brands is we have to disclose whenever we are gifted items, if we have any kind of relationship with a brand, basically. So if I am gifted free product, which I get a lot of PR, so I have to, under the Federal Trade Commission, disclose to you that that was absolutely gifted, that was not bought with my own money, or if I was paid by a brand on a video, whether it's sponsored here or in part, I have to disclose to you that, you know, I basically have a business relationship with these companies, whether it's gifted or paid. So that's the biggest overall rule <clears throat> that affects me for the most part, you know, and the brands is we have to disclose that brand relationship. And this was put in place so that it protects you as a consumer so that you don't just think, that I went and bought something freely and was like, oh, I found this at the store and it was wonderful. So I just wanted to share it with you. You need to know when I'm being paid to market something. Now you will notice I don't do a lot of paid partnerships on my channel. Um, we'll get into that in a minute. Now, if you're being paid to promote something, it certainly changes your what your review is gonna come out as. A lot of times as a part of a paid partnership, we're required as an influencer to abide by certain guidelines that that brand has set for us. We sign a contract that basically lays out for us what we have to say. And of course, in that contract, it usually says we're not allowed to like bash the company. Okay, so they're, or they're not going to pay us to bash them and to give a bad review. You know, obviously, that changes the honesty and the integrity of like, is this really a great product or not? 
It's kind of up to us as an influencer, though, to decide what companies are we representing to you guys? Um, do we, even if we're being paid, do we want to take a brand that is crappy? You know, products that suck. Like, you know, so like I'm going to ruin my reputation uh, of giving you guys good reviews if even if I'm being paid, I'm, I'm telling you guys, look at this wonderful product and what it does. And then it sucks, you know, <laughs> not a good look for me, right? But at least you'll know, like, am I being influenced a little bit by because I'm being paid to promote it? Now, I think that the area of gifted product is where it gets really tricky because you know, I get a lot of gifted products. And the idea is if a brand gives you, gives us influencers or product, they obviously want us to share it with you guys, you know, and they're hoping we're going to get a good review, but they never say in exchange for this free product, you know, you better give us a good review. They don't really explicitly say that, but a lot of people are influenced because it was for free. And if they think they're going to continue getting a product for free, from that brand, if they want to continue getting, like being on their PR list, they're less likely to give really bad reviews about it. You know what I'm saying? Um, so even with a gifted product, it can influence <laughs> the integrity and the truth behind it. So, so for me, you'll notice, I'll go ahead and tell you guys, I get probably, I am not exaggerating, 50 emails a day and way more than that in my DMs, like messages. I don't even look at my messages on Instagram. They all go to a general folder if they're from somebody that's not someone I'm following. And I don't even look at them because there's hundreds in there. There's sugar daddies, there's, yeah. <laughs> there's all kinds of salespeople. There's a lot of stuff. I like, I don't have time for that. I don't have time to sort through all that. So, but I probably get 50 emails a day just of requests of, you know, please showcase this, please showcase that, please, you know, we'd love to collab with you, blah, blah, blah. Um, I probably turned out about 90% of them. I mean, I would never get any videos done because I'd be constantly doing PR and promotions for all these brands. And that is not what I want my channel to be about. I want it to be what I want to do on here. And then as I get some PR I'm interested in and brands I'm interested in that I want to try, if it aligns with that, then I will accept it. That's kind of my guiding principle is, you know, if I am reached out to by like bigger brands, obviously, like I tend to say yes, you know, when I see YSL show up <laughs> in my emails, when I see it cosmetics, urban decay, I say yes. Because I'm like, I mean, I know these brands and I know most of their products are stellar. And so most likely I'm going to like their products. You know what I mean? So you're not going to see like a huge amount of PR from me and really pushing it. It's more that I like to, to accept it, to know in general what I want to recommend to you guys. And it gets tricky with paid partnerships because, you know, I've had so many brands that they were going to pay me really well but I hadn't ever tried the product before. And so I'm like, I don't wanna sign a contract saying I'm going to promote this and get paid for it when I haven't gotten to try it first. It might break people out, you know? Like, <laughs> and so that gets tricky because sometimes I, I ask for a sample first. I'm like, can I try it first and then we'll talk. And then, you know, it's, it's a difficult thing and position to be in. Um, to have to return that product or tell them no thank you after trying it. But it is, it's hard because this is the pressure that's put on us as influencers. So that was kind of some of the like how it's been, what has kind of been the mainstream for a while. Now let's talk about the new changes that are going into effect. So the biggest change of all is how reviews are done. And a lot of this is governing brands. I'm not so much sure how it affects influencers yet, but I really want to shed light on how brands do things sometimes. In general, there is a new rule in place that you basically they can't be buying reviews, can't be buying positive or negative reviews. They cannot misrepresent reviews. They cannot use AI to make fake reviews. They also cannot have anybody working for them on the inside or even relatives of those insiders doing reviews. And 
They also cannot delete or suppress negative reviews on their uh, website or have like kind of an incomplete section. So, and they also cannot like force someone else to guarantee a positive review or a negative review about a competitor, which apparently has been done as well. So basically overall, there is kind of just this whole new rule like kind of taking place, little sections of it that affect how brands can do reviews. So let's talk about this. I think overall, this is a great thing, but I do want to share some areas of, this is where it gets questionable and things I've had experience with in this area. There is a whole world out there of Amazon sellers. Okay. Amazon has in their community guidelines that if you do a review, it has to be a genuine review. It cannot be that you have accepted a free product or have been paid to leave this review. So if you have a relationship with a brand and you go to make a review on that, it can kind of be against their community guidelines, basically. All right. Well, there are hundreds upon thousands of Amazon sellers out there who have actually hired firms who have people working in their organizations too, that that is their entire job, their entire job. They are paid commission to sit all day long and find influencers or people on the internet who are willing to give their company a review, a good review in exchange for a free product. They do this all day long and that's their entire job. I mean, this is the norm and the standard. And I fell victim to this as a beginner influencer. And this happens to a lot of beginner influencers. Almost everyone I know that I'm friends with that we kind of all group together, it happened to every one of them too. These Amazon sellers, they go out and they find somebody who looks like they're gonna, they're starting a blog or they're, they, maybe they post public things sometimes in reviews and they go ask them, hey, would you like this curling iron that we're selling? We'll pay you for it. We'll give you some money on a PayPal account. You take the money and you go buy it and then go and give your honest review afterwards. Or sometimes they'll tell you, go give a review of a five star. Either way, either one of those is a violation of community standards for Amazon. Um, Amazon is very protective of their review integrity. They wanna know that the reviews are solid and real. So, and they have really good bots, really good bots that can spot fraud in an instant. Like they spot it immediately. So you get this first offer as an influencer or as like just beginning on your blog. I think I had just applied for, no, I had gotten accepted into the Amazon affiliate program for, from when I was doing my special needs blog because I had more of a website then. So I was already an Amazon affiliate. And you read a bunch of stuff and agree to it, but who reads all that? <laughs> so you're thinking as this brand new blogger, oh my gosh, look at me. I'm getting my first collab, my first gig. And you're excited. And then you go do your review and it all like kind of worked out. And then other Amazon sellers notice that you did this review and like maybe you posted on your Instagram and they notice, ooh, Sheet is open to this. So you start getting swarmed with like 10 sellers a day wanting you to do the same thing for them. And you're like, oh wow, ooh, I can get Christmas presents for my kids. I can get this, I can get that. Oh wow, this is amazing. And you start doing these reviews for all of them. And you know, I would try not to be like dishonest. I didn't really, I, I never stumbled on a product that was absolute crap. So for me, it wasn't, I never gave a dishonest review because I felt like everything was like about a four four stars. So I was giving out all these four stars and a few five and Amazon's bots said, whoop, fraud. Look what she's doing. She's violating community standards. And they zapped me and they said, you are no longer allowed to post reviews for us. And I was like, what? What in the world? Come to find out I violated community standards. And I just I just was ignorant and didn't do my research to know. Um, well, unfortunately, I had just gotten into the Amazon Influencer Program at this point, and I didn't realize that how it affected me was not only did they limit my reviews, they limited me from being able to post um, anywhere. So I 
you know, I could still like give links to people and make commission off of it, but I couldn't have my shop set up where I could post pictures and captions and stuff because I was basically limited from any kind of posting as a part of this whole review fiasco. So till this day, I have a shop, I have an influencer shop, but you notice I don't advertise it because I can't do a whole lot on it anymore. I'm just giving you guys the absolute honest truth here and letting you know, like, this is, this is what it was like. And so I share all of this to let you know, like, sometimes, sometimes, you know, mistakes happen. And as influencers, like, we're learning and growing too, as we're growing bigger and bigger. And we've put ourselves in the spotlight to where when we make a mistake, the whole world knows we make a mistake. So I try to have grace for other people because I know I've been there myself, you know. So it's really interesting how this will play out because, um, you know, all of these sellers on Amazon, um, these rules are going to affect them. And if they are caught, they are violating now not just Amazon guidelines, they're violating the FTC rules. And that's big penalties. So, yeah. But I did want to make you aware that there is a whole world out there on Amazon. I think that when it comes to Amazon reviews, though, since Amazon is so protective of it, you can probably trust the Amazon reviews a lot more than you can some other reviews. So we're going to talk about that for a moment. Um, I personally have done some reviews while working with brands on Sephora. So there are some bigger brands that, especially as they're launching new products or they've just gotten set up on Sephora, they will sometimes ask their influencers they have a relationship with. They'll send them a new, brand new product and say, hey, you know, this is the campaign as part of the guidelines for this campaign. We want you to, um, you know, try out this product and then go leave your honest review on the Sephora app. So, you know, they did say honest, the ones that I've worked with. So I've done this a couple of times with brands. And so um, I... I accepted it. I took the free product. I tried it out and I went and left an honest review on Sephora. Um, I had to like screenshot that I had, you know, uploaded it to, you know, show my, that, hey, I'd done it, but I didn't necessarily have to share with them what I had said. So it was a little more honest and less pressure that way. Now, um, what is nice about Sephora, though, is they actually have a whole section in there where you check and you say, they want to know, have you been gifted this product? Do you have a relationship with this brand? And you check that category. And so I always checked that. So Sephora does have a separate way of checking and like disclosing that this review was through a partnership, you know, with the brand. So that's nice there. So always kind of check for that when you're looking through reviews on different apps is if a brand or a store or what have you has a separate category to check to see, hey, does this influencer or this person who left this review have, you know, a partnership with the brand? Um, so that's going to help you kind of know, you know, how, how authentic that review was. All right, and then another rule, so this is a, a big one too I want to talk about. This is brands are not going to be allowed to buy followers or views. Ooh, this is a big one, guys, because. So here's my question. I think this applies to brands, but I'm like, what about influencers? Um, and how do they really know? Like, okay, here's the whole world, guys. I'm going to spill some tea for you guys and let you just know the truth. Almost, I'm not going to say every, almost every single account, Instagram account in the beauty community has bought followers and views. Absolutely straight up. Um, okay. Being an influencer in the beauty community, it almost feels like trying to compete in a weightlifting competition where everybody's using steroids but you. <laughs> it's, it's, um, I mean, I, I will not share who or whatever, but I have, I mean, I have tons and tons of contacts, tons of friends in the beauty community, and a lot of them have offered me the pages they use to buy the followers and the views. Of all those DMs I mentioned I get every day, 
probably half of them come from uh, pages and marketing firms or whoever offering their services of what bots I could buy, what followers I can buy, what views I can buy. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, it is, it is a big market. And I personally have, I mean, I'll just go ahead and tell you, I have never once bought followers. I mean, I will claim this like, oh, I'm so, I'm so ethical. And it's because I have such integrity. Honestly, the biggest reason I haven't is because Instagram is smart too. They're kind of like Amazon and they, if they find out and they figure it out, they will shut your account down. And to me, I'm like, there is no way I am risking my account that I have worked so hard to build up, you know, over fake followers. No way. You know, Instagram, they're like, that's one of their number one rules. But I will tell you where there's some things I don't know how this will play out for brands and influencers, um, because you have other things that are maybe in that gray area of like, is this considered buying followers, you know, and that is the whole world of like giveaways. So, you know, I got started on Instagram in the Instagram age where Instagram was just booming. It was before they made a lot of changes. It was before reels and like photographs were everything and like blogs were really big. And I got started there and it grew like fire. The best ways to grow and one of the best ways they, you know, taught us in our like little blogging research and whatnot was to do a lot of giveaways both blind and ghost spot give you giveaways as well as big public ones or you do post them in your stories or or what have you but giveaways was like the way to grow so i did a lot of giveaways guys and um what the way that some of them work though is you would join like an organized giveaway where there was somebody hosting it and everybody in order to enter it had to follow like the whole group whoever was involved and so sometimes they had to follow like 40 people to be able to be entered for this thousand dollar prize or something and um sometimes it's very public and you post it but sometimes you're just there in like a blind spot where like you get the followers but you don't really have to do anything and so you've purchased that spot in there and it's going towards the pot for whatever um the prize the people are going to win so technically, is that buying followers or no? Um, so there's a lot of times where you can pick up a lot of followers and it might look to Instagram or the FTC like you're buying followers, but it's it's not. You're not buying bots or something like that. You're, you're just kind of like a ghost spot in a giveaway. I've done one before though that did attract a bunch of bots accidentally. So I entered this giveaway and you know i paid for to be part of it and to give my part to like the prize and all of a sudden i started seeing like hundreds of accounts following me that just had all these like numbers in them and you'd go to look at the page and there'd be like two posts and like you can kind of spot like a bot you know what i mean and so i started noticing there were hundreds of them and i was like oh my gosh somebody like scammed me on this giveaway <laughs> And so I had to spend all this time to go try to remove all those followers because I'll tell you as an inst as a Instagrammer, if you get a bunch of bots following you, it's actually going to ruin your account because it's going to ruin your engagement. It's going to ruin, you know, I mean, those are not going to be real people actually buying from you and going shopping through your links or whatever. So it's going to ruin your account. It's going to ruin the algorithm for you and having Instagram push your content out because nobody's engaging. Nobody's actually seeing your stuff, you know? So you, you really don't want that to happen in bots. Like it's not in my best interest for that to happen. I'm not going to continue to grow. I'm going to have to keep buying bots if I do that. So it was a big disaster and I had to go back and try to clean up my account as much as possible. But then Instagram has rules in place where if you un unfollow too many or have, or force an unfollow of too many at one time, you'll get an action ban because <laughs> the bot, their bots will pick up on the fact that you're unfollowing really fast. So you have to do a little bit each day very slowly and it's a pain in the rumpus. So anyway, I share these kind of stories behind the scenes to let you know that sometimes these things happen accidentally and you just don't know until you have enough experience in the blogging world to, to identify when something's kind of a scam versus not, or when it's going to violate community guidelines and you didn't realize it, <laughs> you know? So, um, 
I just kind of wanted to share a little bit from that, you know, side of the fence here. So I guess as far as this rule goes, my, I still have some questions from the FTC is like, first of all, how are they going to prove people are buying followers? And, you know, is it going to be relying on like bot software like Instagram has or like Amazon has, in which case they're not going to be able to really fully vet and verify what's really going on here because it could be an accidental thing like what I encountered with that giveaway. So um, there are some like black and white areas there that I would like to see that hashed out a little bit more um, from the influencer side just to know like we're not going to be in trouble for things that were completely out of our control, you know. Um, but as a consumer, it definitely helps you guys because if brands can't be buying followers, and I know, I have, I'm not going to say who, but I have relationships with brands who flat out confessed to me that they had bought followers um, to build their page. Um, they, they flat out told me that. And so there is a lot out there, guys. There's a lot out there that are buying. Um, and so this is, I think that where this affects you guys is just, sometimes we can kind of tell there's a lot of like marketing tactics that brands use to hype up themselves and the more popular they make themselves look, obviously the more legit they're going to look. And, you know, they do things even in tactics like promoting a, a new release product and they're like, oh, it's sold out, but they only release so much so that it will sell out. So then that, you know, generates a whole bunch of buzz about it and everybody thinks, oh, this must be an amazing product. It, it's sold out. So there's a lot of different like marketing, you know, tricks that brands use. And this is just another one of them. You know, they figure customers are probably not going to come to their page as much if they've only got 300 followers. <laughs> you know, if they have a million followers that, hey, they must be very popular and legit and vetted by lots and lots of other consumers. So that's kind of how it affects you is knowing the authenticity of are these real reviewers, real consumers and whatnot. And, you know, on the other hand, you consider there's some very unpopular brands as well as unpopular politicians, celebrities who have millions of followers, but they're very controversial. So do followers really equate to having credibility? Not really, in my opinion, you know. So I feel like the number two is like, I feel like this rule is a little less imperative and less protective of consumers for that reason. Like who cares what followers they have? But to me, it's more the reviews. I think that this is kind of crucial um, is so that you as a consumer can know what are real and true genuine reviews. So that wraps it up for today, guys. This The purpose of this was to kind of familiarize you guys with the new rules that are going to be in place and what that means for you. But I also really wanted to be able to share and have a little spill sesh and really share some of my experience. Um, yeah, hopefully you guys don't judge me too much for <laughs> my honesty and <laughs> sharing with you. I always, always hope to make you guys my number one. You come first above any brand. I always try very hard with if I make a mistake that I confess up to it and I follow up with like I did with Team U and make sure that you have the full knowledge, you know, following that to correct it. <laughs> so this was fun, guys. If you want to see more of my honest reviews then stick around. Um, we'll continue doing our beauty news and keeping you guys up to date. And we do lots of reviews here, lots of fun beauty and a little fun and um, behind the scenes from time to time too like this, keeping you in the know. So if all that interests you, you'll want to stick around and pop that subscribe, turn the notification bells to on so you don't miss more in the future. And I will catch you guys on the next one. Bye.